The Menzigers exist in this weird space in between pop punk, emo, rock and roll, indie rock, and dad punk slash org punk, if you know what that is. They're not quite anything but a rock and roll band, but they're loved by a lot of punk rockers. And I wonder why that is. Do they have ties to that community? I don't actually know. I'm not that familiar with them. Formed in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Yes, that Scranton. In 2006, they've toured with Against Me and they put out albums with Epitaph Records. They formed from the ashes of a ska punk pop punk band called Bob and the Saggots. I guess that's going to answer where their ties to that community comes from. But on April 22nd in 2014, the Manzigers released Rented World. 12 songs at 41 minutes and change. And here's my retro punk rock review for that album. What's up, everybody? How you doing? Welcome back to the Punk Rock Review. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you're a fan of the Menzigers and you want to support this channel and my label to help get other punk rock bands albums out, please go check out Dylan Disaster and the Revelry. Their new album, All Roads, is co-released by my label, 31 Records, and we have 100 copies that come with uh, hand-numbered uh, pressing cards and two exclusive stickers. This will be on my band camp and there's a link in the description. If you want to check that out, I would uh, really appreciate it. I feel like if you like the Menzigers, there is a reasonable chance you're going to enjoy Dylan disaster and the revelry as well. So, but let's get to the review of the album. I'm actually pretty excited. This is one that I didn't realize was hitting his 10 year anniversary today. So I mean, I'm stoked, man. The album starts out with, I don't want to be an asshole anymore. Fantastic song. There hasn't been a lot of instances in my life where I needed a song like this, but there was definitely one. I still think about it. Not because I want her. I'm very happy in my life, but I still feel guilty for how I behaved almost 20 years ago, dude. Um, the song is impactful, especially lyrically. Great jumping off point for a record. I love that I can write this stuff down and read it to you guys later. It, it makes this very interesting to me. Because I don't change anything after I write it down, I just read it to y'all. And I get a lot of comments. Uh, a, people thanking me for doing it this way. You know, it's a little different, but um, I go track by track. You know, I think that's important. Bad Things, a very Frank Turner sounding song, especially in the vocals. Incredibly catchy and even familiar sounding chorus. It's a good song. And then I put, man, that chorus, it's infectious. <laughs> The next song is called Rodent. Pardon my voice, by the way. I'm not feeling good right now. I got a cold or something. Rodent. Uh, at first, the, with the music and melody, the song was just kind of okay. It wasn't bad, but it's not great. But when you take into consideration the lyrics, this one becomes much better. It grew on me very quick. Self-aware, self-hatred, a uh, feeling that I'm very familiar with, unfortunately. Coming with uh, you know a decade plus of addiction, and then it, oh, now I'm dealing with over a decade of sobriety. It's It's interesting to look back on that stuff, you know? Where Your Heartache Exists, a haunting ballad. It immediately grabbed me. I love the vocal performance on this one. Man, this song is great. I've been that guy before, wanting someone so bad that doesn't want you the same way. Maybe I misunderstood the lyrics, but this is what it said to me. The bridge is a little too poppy. It took away from the mood a little bit. Overall, pretty great, though. The guitar picks up at the end and redeems the change of mood. It's a great song. What a fantastic album so far. If this had existed when the movie High Fidelity was made, this is the kind of record that John Cusack and Jack Black would have raved about in that film. Come on now. Listen to that. Come on now. My friend Kyle. I had a friend Kyle once. He was our right, guy. Bruce Springsteen, anyone? Yes, please. This is where they cross over with Gaslight Anthem quite a bit. A uh, heavier, more punk sound and a story about a friend. Those two bands should tour. Maybe, maybe they have. I don't actually know. The lyrics in this one, they're sad. Those emotions usually create beautiful art. We wouldn't need this stuff if we were happy and had no pain, I guess. That's accurate. Very accurate. Transient Love, a very 90s grunge opening. The lyrics on this one are a little pretentious, in my opinion. This one is just not doing it for me. The first official skip of the album. What's that in? Like, Five or six songs in, though? That's crazy. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, six songs in. Took half the album to get to a one I didn't want to listen to. That's that's. I mean, that's a great uh, percentage, in my opinion. The next song is called The Talk. Okay, this one is more of what I wanted to hear. Had plenty of these screw you, I'm better off without you anyways types of days. Heaviest song on the record and a great track. 
nothing feels good anymore. Musically, sonically, this is probably the most interesting song on the entire album to me. Uh, I stand behind that. This song was beautiful. I loved it. Hearts Unknown starts off sounding almost like a bouncing soul song. And then the second guitar comes in and it's got single note playing instead of a chord. And it really gives depth to the song immediately. The vocal melody and the chorus is beautiful too. This, this right here is a great song. Come on now. In Remission. Musically, this one starts off sounding like some early indie and emo uh, music. And the new Green Day song, Dilemma, sounds kind of similar to this. Uh, incredibly relatable lyrics as well. Great song on an exceptional bull. Great song on an, on an, an except. Great song on an exceptional album so far. Sentimental Physics. Musically, a pretty good song, but the lyrics aren't affecting me the way the last couple of songs did. It's a good song, just hard to compete with the prior two tracks, and that, that happens sometimes. Sometimes you'll get a good song that's not just, you know, a banger, and it's stuck in between, like, two or three, four really amazing songs, and that song will suffer for that. But if you were to isolate that song on, say, a playlist, a uh, randomized playing or something, you hear it and go, oh, that's a really good song. I feel like that's where this song fits in not quite a skip but definitely not one that i'm going to put on a playlist somewhere and then the last song on the album is called when you died very simple guitar and vocal song not really what i wanted to end a record on to be honest uh, i'd love to know the story of the song's lyrics though this is a bad way to end such an up-tempo and generally fun album and i put although their lyrics uh do tend to be fairly dark on this record so i guess it didn't stray too far from the mold it's just that I generally want an album to end in a way that makes me either want to dive right back in or go check out more of that band's music. And this did neither of those things for me. So the end of this record, I feel like kind of kind of falls off a little bit. But that gives us 12 songs, nine that I thought were outstanding. That gives us two that I just didn't really care for and one that I was, was okay. So let's do this mathematically. So 9 out of 12 is 75. That gives us a 7.5 out of 10, right? But one of those songs isn't quite a skip. So I'm going to go with an 8 out of 10 on this. I'm going to bump it up a little bit because one of them wasn't a skip. So we're going to go 8 out of 10 for the Menziger's Rented World. I think that this album is, I don't know, listenable for, for a long time. I thought that the production on the album was really good. I enjoy the vocal stylings. I don't know the gentleman's name. Sorry. I'm not that familiar with this band, as I said before, but I, I thought that the vocals were really good. The production was solid. The guitar tone was really nice. Never, even on their like single note, excuse the chair making those noise, uh, even on this like single note um, guitar picking, it was like a slight bit of gain and it wasn't just a clean channel. I liked it, man. This is the kind of music that competes with bands like the Gaslight Anthem, in my opinion. Let's see, who else does music kind of like this? Somebody else just put an album out. Oh my goodness, hold on. Give me one second. I'm going to figure out who it is I'm talking about. A few moments later. That's what it was. I compared Iron Sheik to similar to the Menzigers and Gaslight Anthem is what it was. And they're more punk than those bands. But I don't know. All those bands could tour together, I think. But have you heard of Iron Sheik? If you have, what is your opinion on them? What is your favorite Menzigers album? Do you have a favorite song on this album? Let me know your thoughts, man. I'm interested to hear some feedback. Because this is more of the punk adjacent music that I'll cover on this channel than outright punk rock. But as I said at the beginning of the video, they come from the punk rock world, I guess. If you have information on their backstory, dude, let me know. I'm a little interested in this. I don't have the time to do the research. But most of the time when I make a video like this and I have questions, the fans come out and let me know what the deal is. So I really appreciate when people do that. If you're, you know, being respectful anyways. But that's that for the... 10-year celebration of the Menziger's Rented World. Dude, 10 years old. I feel like I remember when this one came out. I think I said earlier that I, I think I might have heard this one a little while after it released, but I think this is the one that I heard when it released because my kid would have been one when this came out. And I definitely remember already knowing the Menziger's when he was around, when, they, when we had him. Wasn't a huge fan. Never, never have been a huge fan. I like their music, though. Obviously, I wouldn't have spent all this time doing this i had to listen to it a couple times and spend some time with the album uh to do the review so anyways i had a great time hope you did too please like the video subscribe to the channel please man go check out dylan disaster and the revelry man go check out my band camp link in the bio 
uh, link in the description, excuse me, link in bio, I'm speaking, in, uh, Instagram talk. But uh, they worked really hard on this, and I did a lot of work to come up with some stuff to make it special. So, um, yeah, we would appreciate it. Otherwise, have a great day, everybody. Peace.